All right. So this week we're joined by Dan Aguire from the Bar Room Network. And uh, yeah, Dan, if you want to tell us a little bit about it. Oh, well, I've been doing the Bar Room for about, what, five, six years now. I work with Mr. Aldo Gandia. And you gentlemen have reached out to me a few times. And finally, uh, we're making it work. All right. Well, keep in mind, all this is on available on demand. If for some reason, you know, life is complicated, people have kids, I get it. You can't necessarily watch on YouTube whenever things are happening in the moment. But Tooch has got weekend sports betting Friday night. Again, if you can't watch, it'll be available on demand. Greg Gabriel in the house on Monday mornings. Again, he used to be in the Bears front office. So it's always, uh, you're listening to a guy that's connected, even so he knows people that are still there. You got Draft on Tap with Danny Shimon on Wednesday nights. He's the ballroom guru for watching the tape and such. And then there's Aldo and me on Tuesdays with Bear Their Souls. Uh, this week, it was fun. If you go back and listen, uh, uh, here goes a fun fact. So uh, a lady that I was dating in, in 1997, 1998, 1999, you know, you know, things happen, you break up, and you always had that, uh, that longing of like, she's the one that got away. 25 years later, we're back together and we're getting married. And um, she was on the show Tuesday night, so that was fun. She's here now. She's here now, guys. That's awesome. Her name's Nikki. If if you don't mind me having her say hi or something. Oh. Hello. Hi, Nikki. Thanks for uh, thanks for sitting there listening in. You could have chimed in. Well, congratulations. Oh no, no, no. I I just love listening to the guys talk about football. I love it. Yeah, she. All of her conversations on Tuesday re- revolved around her stripper days or dirty, filthy sex talk. So we. <laughs> She's okay listening to the Bears talk to you, though. So, like, my first question was, like, as, like, a long-term Bears fan, I'm 33, so, you know, you've got a, you know, a couple. Like, I got a decade on Bears, you. Yeah. yeah, you got a decade of Bears fandom on me. Um, So, my first, I, I do like older perspective of stuff. You know, Polly has introduced me to a few guys on Twitter and YouTube of, like, guys who have lifelong. And I, the older I get, I feel like that matters, right? I used to think a little bit young school of, football is football now and it only matters now but like sometimes the history does end up mattering so as a long-term bears fan are there any things about like the upcoming process and like this regime like ryan poles matt eberflus the caleb williams prospect anything that gives you like similar vibes or that like kind of like a, a bad feeling or anything that feels like special or unique and something that feels like positive or negative about is the question up? basically juxtaposing something from the past versus the current process is that is i'm understanding yeah correctly? Does, does, does something give you like is this something you feel like you've seen before and you're just like you know we'll see how it shakes out or is it something that you know you feel unique it's kind of like special and maybe it gives you a little bit more optimism than it has in the past i feel like even in years that i know that if you gave me truth serum that they're going to be bad, I I just can't acquiesce to that. Like I I think every year this could be the year I've been waiting for my entire life. This could be the Super Bowl year. We'll be five and twelve, and and I still think this is the year. I can't be a fan and and come out and tell you, well, that's it. We're going to lose. Then why am I here? I I look. I don't play fantasy football. I'm not one of these dudes. It's like, well, I sure hope. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers throws four touchdowns today, but we somehow win. No, man, I don't play fantasy. I don't gamble. I don't really care about other teams. All my shit is here. I live and die with this team uh, to uh, uh, probably I should see therapy or something. Like I let this team affect my, my ups and downs like too much. I mean, I've gone through all these quarterbacks, man, starting with Jim McMahon and all the way through, you know, Mitch and then Justin Fields and, and then now. But I did love Fields. I loved Jay Cutler as well. Hell, I loved Rex Grossman. But, yeah, I, I really wanted to keep Fields. He's been traded now, so I'm moving on. So I'm hoping they don't f*** around. I just hope they, they take Caleb Williams and not try to outsmart people now. Because you've already traded Fields. Like, don't trade it for more picks and then hope somebody else is there. Like, don't f*** that up. That's so Chicago Bears. You know, we have this history of, of having guys who feel like they're smarter than everybody else with like Phil Emery, Mark Trestman, um, even Ryan Pace. You saw Matt Nagy. Yeah. You you know, with Ryan Pace, you saw him trading up constantly for failures. It's like, dude, you're not smarter than everybody else. And typically that's the way it goes in the NFL. And Ryan Poles, man, he, he pulled a fast one on the league. He definitely, definitely made out from trading that pick back, but it's like, okay, don't let it get to your head. You're not smarter than everybody else. This is the NFL. 
play conservative now. You won that trade. If you just coast out your career with conservative moves, you probably have a 10-year career here easily just because you won that trade. I mean, you can ride this thing out for a while now. You know what I mean? Are you guys uh, upset over the the idea that Fields, we only got a sixth round pick? I mean, it just seems like so low. We've seen some really awful quarterbacks around the league get traded. Like, I don't mean to pick on Sam Darnold or or the guy that the Steelers traded to the Eagles. Both of those, the picket guy, both of those were third round picks, I think. And Justin's only worth a sixth? Like, to me... I'm, if you're going to trade him, like I, I know you want to quote do well by him and get him with a good coach, but that still bothers me. Like he he's worthy of at least a third. Man, if Sam Darnold's worth a third, Fields is worth a second. Then like Sam Darnold, does anybody else feel it that I, way about it? I couldn't agree more with you. I always I, I have this weird balance of like business as usual uh, opinion versus a uh, you know guys talk right? It's a business at the end of the day. And there's only X amount of NFL players in the league and they all have each other's phone numbers. And so I completely agree with you. And I was on the bandwagon where I think he should have gone for like a second round pick at the very least, um, second and a fourth or something like that. That was my initial thought about it. And I still think he's going to end up being a, a legitimate starter in this league. So the only real answer I could have is, you know, Ryan Poles willingly took a pay cut or like a draft cut trade cut to put him in a situation where he could be successful because there had to be a team that had a, a worse situation for fields to go to. And I think the biggest rumor was like the Eagles to go to uh, Philadelphia for like a third or something like that. And Ryan Poles, you know, said, Hey, you know, we're going to do right by Justin. I agree with you. And so my only justification in defense of like Ryan Poles and the move is maybe he was just like, you know what, I'm going to take one on the chin a little bit, trade this guy for a, and realistically, he's it's going to be a fourth round pick. He all, the only way it stays a sixth round pick is if Justin Fields plays less than fifty percent of the Steelers' offensive snaps this whole season. So I mean, I can't fathom a world where Russell Wilson plays nine games and Justin Fields plays eight. I feel like Justin Fields is going to play probably fifteen or fourteen games. So I, I feel like that's that's my only justification for the outrage, which I agree with. Um, at the end of the day. I took, I swallowed that pill and I kind of took that one on the chin and said, you know, it's kind of part of the business because somebody's going to say, you know, a player who's going to think about signing with Chicago is going to go, well, look how they treated Justin Fields. They just shipped him out to Philadelphia to sit behind Jalen Hurts for three years while he started and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's my take on that one. The cliche that's been said for years is, uh, you know, the Bears. If you're going to get to a level where you're going to win multiple playoff games and the Super Bowls consistently, you got to re-sign your own draft picks and build through the draft. And there's so many years that we draft players and then let them walk. So when you were mentioning Jalen Johnson, I thought the same thing. Like you got to keep some of your own draft picks sometime, right? And it seems like that never is the case for the Bears. Random. I mean, there's been one or two guys seemingly out of every draft, maybe that they keep long term. And, and so I, I agree with you saying that. Um, I really like Justin Fields. I did. I, I man, I made T-shirts. Just incredible Fields. We were walking around the parking lots during the tailgating, handing them out, making videos and stuff like that, dude. So I, I was all in on the guy. But you yeah. know, you said it yourself, man. You went to four games. One of them, Tyson Bajan started. That's the only victory you saw. Yeah. That, that's and the rough. Denver game, we had a twenty-eight to seven I, lead. I in, know, and he in the second the ball half at the end. And, and but yeah. listen, but we also did, didn't kick a field goal when we should have. So there's multiple things you could point at. However, I really felt that this was the year for Fields to take a strong step forward, and he didn't. He got hurt for more games than he's been out for in the past, and the numbers still look pretty pedestrian. And so I I understood the situation, and I understood why because you wind up with the number one overall pick it's just leverage wise man there's just so much against fields you're gonna have to move on you know whereas for example if carolina wins a couple more games and we have pick six and pick nine i think you write it out with justin fields right so i mean it's that close right i don't think he's terrible a lot of people say oh he's terrible no he's to me in my opinion he's very average right now does he still have room to grow yeah i think so he still has some potential he still has life in this league um will it happen i don't know i hope hope the best for him but you know but then getting a six round pick in return like david said that had to be kind of like you know biting the bullet and th there were rumors out there about you know more draft capital that we could have gotten for him 
Yeah, at the end of the day, I, I think I'm a little bit more old school in my thought. And, like, you know, I've shared this opinion a couple times, and, and a lot of people don't like it. Hell, I would have kept them. I would have kept them as the backup even. I don't care about competition. To me, that's not you're like, oh, you're dividing the locker room. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah, these guys make a paycheck. These guys make a paycheck every week they play. Okay, so they're they're going to be professionals. They're going to support whoever. And um, yeah, and to me, it's like you know these these guys get hurt all the time. I mean, we saw the Vikings go through five quarterbacks. Yep. Yeah. So you know, I I wouldn't mind keeping them on the roster, no matter what kind of locker room drama that stirs up in the narratives of the media and whatnot. Because I I don't really buy into that stuff all too often. So you know, I I can see why they did move on from him though and that return man you you might as well have just traded him for like a bag of chips right you mentioned that denver game the 28 to 7 that we lost but arguably that that was at the cleveland game too and that's the one where darnell mooney dropped the hail mary at the end for us to lose i mean the ball hit him right in the stomach i was right behind the play in the end zone and that one was sickening to me because, I yeah. mean, I'm eating shit all the way out of the stadium. And then e- even in my car, the dude's listening to the Browns post game on the radio. And it's just and, like, and it's oh, the man. Browns, you know, like, Jesus. Yeah. yeah we, also the game where Robert Tunyon dropped like a awesome yes. flea flicker? God. Absolutely. In the first and, quarter. 